Hey everyone, welcome back to Rain When I Can. Um, it's been a while. This is my first time filming since October. Um, so kind of want to do just like a summation of 2020, my reading year, and then look at 2021 and my goals and stuff going forward. So um, if you can hear it, one of my neighbors is like randomly blasting music right now. Um, sounds like Elvis. <laughs> it's like two o'clock on a Saturday afternoon in January. So I don't know, odd choice, but um, could be worse. But if you hear music, that's what that is. So I just wanted to put that out there because I uh, didn't expect that to be a problem today. But anyway, um, so hi, I hope everyone is doing well. Um, like I said, I haven't filmed since October. So I kind of want to talk about that. Um, you know, what my year looked like and what I'm hoping will change going forward. So 2020 was a doozy. I think everyone in the entire world had a similar doozy-ish experience, right? We didn't expect anything that happened to happen. Um, thankfully, you know, my family is relatively, you know, healthy and we've been okay and, you know, knock on wood, but um, it's been a hard year, like, regardless. So um, my channel was pretty stagnant for this past year. Um, there's a couple reasons for that. You know, I have a toddler. Uh, I work full time. This spring was so difficult um, with school because we were all online um, and it's exhausting to sit in front of a computer all day and teach. And then, you know, when I had free time, the last thing that I wanted to do, honestly, was like go on and record videos. So, you know, that was hard. Um, and then this summer was definitely like a rejuvenation. And then when the school year started again, um, it was it was hard to find time. And again, we're doing a hybrid model. So faculty is in school, you know, like normal, but the kids alternate um, which days that they're in the building, depending on which cohort they're in. And the days are shorter than they would be in a typical year, but we still have a full schedule. So it's, it's a weird system. So it, you know, it was exhausting. And then, um, I was in a couple of awesome projects, which I'll talk about, you know, in, in a bit, but it was hard to find time to where I could film and also read the books that I wanted to read. And, you know, this past year was just a doozy, like I said. So um, I, I've been inconsistent since the beginning. I started my channel in 2016 and I've always had, you know, it, not an issue. I don't want to put it that way, but um, sometimes it's hard to balance, you know, what's happening in my non-reading life to what's happening here. So like I did a lot of unboxings to begin with, but that's not really sustainable. And um, I don't know. I still don't know what I'm doing with this channel to be perfectly frank. Um, and it's not that I don't love it because I do. It's just hard to find time. So that's some of the stuff we'll be talking about today. But anyway, 2020 was actually a really good reading year for me. Um, even if it wasn't a good filming year, I read 80 books this past year. Um, now my, my goal was 52. From here on out, for at least the foreseeable future, I'm going to mark my reading goal on Goodreads as 52 books. That's one book a week and super doable, um, especially as I've been getting into more and more audiobooks, which I never really ventured into before, but I read quite a few on audiobook this year. Um, 17 of those 80 books were my son's um, because I do like to keep track of like the books that I read him. Um, but, you know, 17 out of 80 there's still a lot of, of books that I read myself. So I did want to talk about, you know, a lot of the books that I loved this year. Um, I read some books that I absolutely adored, some that didn't resonate as well with me. Um, about 15, I think, 15 to 20 of those books were historical romance, which is my primary genre lately. Um, definitely a genre that I love. Um, so yeah, I, I just wanted to talk about some of the books that I enjoyed um, and then some of the highlights for my booktube stuff this year. So anyway, my favorite book this year that I read was The Other Bennett Sister by Janice Hadlow. Um, it's about Mary Bennett um, and how her life is kind of um, reflected on um, 
you know, her character development. They talk about her childhood, um, the way she was in Pride and Prejudice, and then what happens after. And I just thought it was so well done. It was a very quiet novel, but when it was over, I was just so sad um, because I loved it so much. So I actually got that from the library, and it comes out in paperback in April, and I'm probably going to pre-order it because I'm so excited to actually own a copy of that. Um, my other favorite book that I read this year was North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. Now, I started this during Victober, towards the end of the month, um, and I didn't finish it until about a week and a half ago, and it wasn't because I didn't love it, because I really did. It's just that, you know, I would read a couple pages and then, you know, go to bed, and some days I didn't pick it up. So it did take me a long time. I mean, it's over 500 pages, so that had something to do with it, but, um, I really love North and South, so that was definitely a highlight for this year. Um, another book that I really love was Beach Read by Emily Henry, um, contemporary. Uh, I, I have Book of the Month, and I got it early, and I read it in about a day, maybe a day and a half, um, but that was a really quick read, especially in the spring when everything was still um, nerve-wracking and really, I mean, still nerve-wracking, but um, when we were at the height of all of this, it was a definite good book for me to read. Um, the Dutch House by Ann Patchett I really loved, and Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade was probably one of my favorite books that I picked up in the second half of this year. Um, some honorable mention books, um, I really love Belgravia by Julian Fellows. Um, he is the creator of Downton Abbey, and they made a TV show adaptation of it as well, um, and it was just, it was just a fun book. Um, I did prefer it, I think, actually, as the TV show, but the book itself was really enjoyable. Um, Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Miranda Garcia was so cool, very atmospheric. Um, I read this on December 30th, so just a couple days ago, but I have to look at my notes because I'm old, but it's How the King of Alfheim Learned to Hate Stories um, by Holly Black, so that is like book 3.5 out of the um, Folk of the Air trilogy that she wrote, so good. And the Ravenel, Ravenel series by Lisa Kleypas, I buddy read with um, Doris and Heidi, and that series was really good. And we're rereading Bridgerton. So we had all read Bridgerton, the Bridgerton books previously. I read them in 2018, I think, um, and Doris and Heidi had read them previously as well. Um, so we're rereading them now together, and we watched the first episode um, of the show, and we, we you know, we've been chatting on Boxer all about it, and it's been so fun. So those are just some of my highlights of this year. Um, I read mostly, like I said before, historical romance, um, but I love historical fiction. I'm not usually a contemporary person, and I definitely read probably 10 contemporaries this year, um, and I really enjoyed them. So trying to open up my um, reading experiences a little bit, um, get out of my comfort zone, has been really, really good. For me but I definitely like my favorites. Um, I love historical fiction and I love classics too. So I do want to talk about some of the highlights of my year um, because it, it was a rough year but I mentioned Doris and Heidi before. I love those two so much. Um, we've been reading books together. I think it's almost, it's got to be a year and a half at this point I would think um, if not longer. But we've read a couple different series together. We've read a couple different contemporary books together. Um, and I just love talking to those two and um, the insights that we talk about. And it's just really, really fun. So shout out to them. Um, and I'm in a romance chat. I've been like MIA. So my apologies to those girls right now. But um, that has been great as well. So I was more active in that in the spring. Um, and then with everything kind of going on, it's taken a back seat, um, but that's definitely something I want to do in my goals for 2021 is be more active in like these group environments um, because I really haven't been lately. The one thing that I did that in a group that was like the best um, was the choose your own adventure videos for Victober that Kate Howe set up. Um, I'm going to link to it below. It was probably the coolest experience ever. So if you haven't watched them, um, I know it's like January, but um, I really do encourage you to to click it below. It was like the coolest, most innovative thing that I've definitely been a part of on BookTube. So yeah, that's the highlight of 2020. So it wasn't all bad. Um, it was just stressful at times. And I think, like I said before, we all kind of experienced that sort of 
I don't know. I don't even know the word for it, but parts of it were so stressful and parts of it were great. And I think we're all excited for a new year. I don't think, you know, this year is going to magically get better, but, um, I definitely have some goals that I want to work towards this year. So the first one is, like I said before, I want to be more active in the community. I really love chatting with people about books. Now my real life friends, I do have a book club that I'm in in real life, which is amazing. They're like the smartest ladies I know. Um, but not always, not everyone reads what I read all the time. So finding these little groups um, of people to talk to about romance, about historical fiction, about classics, um, you know, it's really important to me to maintain those friendships. So that is something I want to do is be more um, active either on, uh, you know, Instagram with bookstagram posts or on Goodreads groups or in the Boxer Chat or all, all that stuff. Um, definitely want to be more active. Um, now, like I said, also, I'm still unsure about what I'm doing with this channel. Um, I'm kind of a private person to a certain extent when it comes to this sort of thing, which I know I'm posting on YouTube, so that only goes so far, but, um, I don't know. I'm still unsure if it's just easier for me right now to like table this and focus on Instagram or if I can kind of work out a schedule, but I would like to try to post two times a month um, while I figure my stuff out. Um, and then that way I'm still part of the community and I'm not just like, hey, it's been six months and I'm back again. So that's one of those other things I want to do. Um, and I also want to read more books that I already own. Um, I have we put in like fake built-in bookcases when we moved. So we moved last August. Um, so we're still fixing, fixing up like a lot of this house, but, um, I reorganized our books right when we were decorating for Christmas. And, um, there's a lot of books that I've had for years, years, and I haven't read them yet. Um, I actually have a pile of books in our basement right now that I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to keep them, if I'm going to give them away. When I first joined booktube, it was like the height of like the YA fantasy. And I bought so many books that I just, I don't know, I'm 33 years old right now. I don't know if I want to read certain books. And I'm not saying if you, you know, read certain books, that's inappropriate or, you know, you're too old for them, nothing like that. But, um, the books that I bought when I was 27 are not necessarily the books that I want to read now. Um, you know, some of the books were just like super hype. So I bought into the, the hype and not necessarily what I want to read anymore. Um, so I don't know. There's like, a, like I said, a, a pile of books downstairs. Um, but there's also just books that I know that I want to read and I own. And like, I've been making use of the library, which is great, but I have books here that I need to read. So I'm on a semi book buying ban um, for myself. I still belong to book of the month, although I'm not sure if I'm going to hold on to that subscription either. Um, but, you know, unless there's a book that I'm really, like, that I need, like, you know, I, I want to buy the other Bennett sister uh, when it comes out in paperback. But other than that, like, if I'm not dying for this book, I don't need to, like, wander the store and just pull books off the shelf, which I do love to do. But for the next six months or so, I kind of want to cool it on buying books. So, also, um, let's talk about books that I do want to read this year. So, I want to read my own shelves. Um, I would like to read more contemporary books, um, romance, or just women's fiction, because um, I'm not really a contemporary reader that much, um, but the ones that I've read this year I've really enjoyed. I also want to read Lord of the Rings. Um, I've never read them before. My husband is a big reader, um, and we've kind of decided that we're going to do a, <laughs> like a couple's read-along. Um, so he said he'd read my favorite author, which is Jane Austen. And he's like so into Tolkien. So um, I'm going to read Fellowship to start. And I'm hoping that's successful because I've read The Hobbit and I liked it. But it took me a long time to get through it. So we'll see um, how that goes. I also really want to read War and Peace and just kind of get it off of my, you know, like to-do list. I've had it. I've owned the copy for a while. I love the miniseries. I saw the musical. Um the great comment when it was on Broadway and I loved it. Um, so I, I do want to read War and Peace this year. So let's see if that happens. And then just more classics and more nonfiction. That's the other thing. Um, 
I always make a list of books that I want to read that are nonfiction. I was a history major in college. Um, I love biography. So I really should, you know, be able to pick up more nonfiction books. So that's my goal for this year. How are you all doing? Let me know. This is way longer than I anticipated it being. I'm like over 15 minutes right now. Um, I don't edit any of my videos. So all the umming sorry. Um, but I hope you're all doing well. Let me know what books you're anticipating for 2021. Um, and what was your best part of 2020? Let's find the good in, you know, a, a pretty bad year, but, um, let me know one good thing that you experienced this past year. So anyway, I'm hoping I will see you sooner rather than later. I hope you all have a good day and I'll talk to you soon.